Hey everyone, Nick from Resonic Sound Solutions here with another competitor spotlight at Aggieland X. This time we have Brian Fleming. Brian, what is going on? Who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, Brian Fleming from West Monroe, Louisiana, uh, competing uh, all the four orgs in uh, uh, Money Round. Cool. So what do you, what's your vehicle here? It's a 2020 Ram uh, Crew Cab 1500, 4x4, um, running a uh, JL Audio Focal Mix, uh, all my amps and DSP currently is VXI JL Audio. Cool. And let me hop over there. You know what? You show yeah. me. Go over there. So you know it's cool. So it looks pretty pretty stock for the most part. That was I guess until you lift the seat. Somewhat the intent. Yes, uh, we we kept everything pretty much in stock locations except for obviously the sub enclosure and part of the amp rack. Uh, got the VXI 800 and a 400. 800 is powering my front stage and also using two channels to power my rear differential or differential rear fill. Okay. Uh, all my speakers are Focal. Uh, front stage is Utopia M's uh, three-way and then I've got Focal Wolfers in the rear doors, uh, K-Series and using the, the 3KM uh, the new M series or Empire series focals for my rear speakers. Cool. So did you build this or did you have anyone local or was it done here at MTI? The enclosure was built by Paul Morgan at Net Audio in Wichita Falls, Texas. Okay. Uh, MTI did uh, my A pillars and uh, some of the uh, front stage stuff. Uh, and then my local shop in um, Monroe, Louisiana, Suncoast Audio, uh, along with myself. Uh, we did all the wiring, all the, the installation of the, the system itself. Cool. It looks all my, clean, too. Thank you. Yeah. You did a good job on it. All the uh, tuning is done here, MTI, through Jeffrey Hall and, uh, and, and his, his company. Cool. But, so let's, uh, let's move on to the front. Let's see what you got going on up here. I would like to show you behind the seat. Though. Oh, you would. Uh, yeah, we you got uh, something going on here. Well, we have our sub amp here, uh. and if you look under, well, behind the... Uh, so let's see. Here, I'll pull this up. Hold up and push back, and then all our distribution is there. Ah, easy and serviceable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whoop, hold on. There, there we go. go. Cool. All right, let's get in the front. It's hard to do that one-handed. <laughs> So what do you got going on in here, Brian? Uh, as I stated earlier, Focal, Utopia M, front three-way, uh, TBM tweeter, the uh, the three-inch WM, and then I've got six and a half WMs in the uh, in the front doors. Okay. okay. Uh, factory head unit um, using the uh, PAC CH41 with toss link adapter for signal. Uh, got a uh, JL Audio networking device. The hub is underneath my front dash, and okay. I have a little panel here. You can just pop off, and you can easily service that. So um, everything looks pretty, like you're driving in your car. Everything looks, for the most part, pretty factory until, you know, you look across, but you have no, no windshield space taken up. Nothing of that sort, no crazy uh, fabrication. Is there is there a point to all that? Like you like a factory look or, or uh, is that just how you ended up? It's just kind of really how it, it all flowed organically. So you're um, holding the grill. Show me what's going on here. Yeah, we do have grills that can go on uh, the, Pop the in. front pods. Well, this one actually goes on that ah, side. So here, let's you'll... see. Let's hope I don't break it. <laughs> That's it. Cool. Yeah. So looks... once they're installed, uh, it's, it's... That actually looks great. Not factory, obviously, but it's it's pretty close. Yeah. So let's see over here. Yeah, it looks neat. That looks really clean. So yeah, so you're pretty new to this from what I understand. I've been doing SQ competitions for about a year. Okay. Uh, Aggieland last year, well, technically USAC uh, World Finals, I was able to go to it in Oklahoma. And then the weekend after that was my first real big competition, which was Aggieland uh, so 9. So you told me that story yesterday. Why don't we recap? <laughs> okay. And because I, I think uh, it's a good, I think it's a good story for people to, you know, it sheds some light, mm -hmm. you know, and it can help people. Like, oh, we we can do, you know, let's let, we'll get into it. Yeah. So, obviously, you know, baptism by fire, uh, coming straight into <laughs> Aggie Land, uh, right out right out the gate. Uh, I did not have the benefit of having smaller, you know, organizational type competitions prior to. So we finished the install literally a week before the USACI event. 
Um, I did get good feedback at USAC, but there was really only six or seven SQ competitors there, and it was kind of hectic with the SPL stuff going on also. Okay. Fast forward a week later, we come to Aggieland, and you, you, know, you see what we have here, you know, some of the best cars in the country. I had no idea how I was going to do. I thought I, was, I had a preconceived notion that my tune was pretty good. Uh, my local uh, shop in, in North Louisiana actually did the initial tuning after we finished the install. I had real, no real base of, of, of reference to, to gauge how, how good it was until I got here. And then I started figuring out real quick that we had a problem. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it, as it turns out, I actually came in uh, last place that last year in the, uh, in the money round, and deservedly so. Uh, the, the tune was not to SQ standards. It, it didn't image well, it didn't, it just, it wasn't, you know, what it needed to be. The potential was there. We just hadn't had the opportunity to take, you know, to tap into it. Uh, I received some very sage advice uh, at that show from a gentleman named Nick Wingate, and he advised that I get with Jeffrey Hall, who is local here to me. Uh, I'm about six hours from, from College Station, and uh, advised me that Jeffrey, you know, tuned my vehicle which we started doing uh, very shortly thereafter. And it was night and day. Uh, immediately, my scores went up across the board, you know, 40, 50 points on scorecards. Uh, started doing very well at some of the, the more local uh, IASCA and Emma shows. Winning a few, placing, you know, typically placing at least. And just and had a lot of fun. the best part, you get to enjoy a better sounding car yourself. And, I, and, and it introduced me to what a true sq type you know tune can sound like and uh it's been an enjoyable 12 months and educational 12 months to, yeah. to, uh, you know, to yeah. say the least and uh here i am at my uh, second aggie land so let me ask you what was the biggest thing you've learned since then the most like important piece of information that you've learned since then as a new competitor new to you know the higher end car audio thing uh what's been the most beneficial piece of information that you kind of have been able to gain to me personally it's having a good reference uh understanding what the reproduction of the music is is truly supposed to sound like mm -hmm. um prior to a year ago I'd, I'd never had that reference um yes i've got a you know a nice uh or semi nice home system set up but even it's not tuned like i knew now know that it can be tuned you know and in, in the potential that's there for it um but I think really until you truly hear a, a good reference system, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And now that I've got that base of reference and, and of course, all the excellent vehicles that are here and, and what's great, obviously, about SQ is that everybody wants to demo and everybody's going to give you an opportunity to, to sit in their vehicles and listen. And you know, even the guys that have been doing it 30, 40 years, um, you know, it starts training your ears to understand what it's supposed to sound like and then from there it's just putting in the work and and you know the time to to go in and, and get that you know to its full potential out of your own personal system yeah so being relatively new to this uh, i ask everyone the same thing towards the end of it what is a bit of advice that you would give to someone who is maybe watching these videos that hasn't been to one of these events, whether it's spectate or compete? Mm -hmm. I think it's really good to come from someone like you who's still new to this and maybe actually remembers what that was like. Um, so what is some advice or words that you would give to someone who's seeing these videos and is thinking about coming out to one of these events? make the time um even if you don't have your system done yet if you're just in the planning phase and because it's going to be beneficial uh in that phase especially to help you understand what it is that if you're truly desiring sq type performance uh you need to put in the the time and effort to go to the shows uh typically no matter where you live there should be a show somewhere you know on a random weekend within three to four hours uh, it would be def definitely worth your time, even without your own vehicle ready, to go and, and be at that show, ask to demo. A lot of times you don't even have to ask. The guys will just, hey, come listen to my vehicle. You know, <laughs> yeah. I want to I wanna demo my truck for you or my car. But, yeah. um, and then start building that base of reference for yourself and, and ask questions. Just, you know, there's, there's not an unfriendly, unfriendly person at these events. Everybody is, is willing to you know, bend over backwards to help, especially a new person. Uh, we want to see the the hobby grow and and you know gain even more popularity and 
Uh, so everybody's going to bend over backwards to do anything they can to yeah. help somebody. So I know you're also probably not done with this truck. What is your next plan of attack? I know we discussed it yesterday. You know, I took a listen to it and, uh, you know, we talked about it a bit. What do you think you're going to change from here in order to upgrade it? Because you do have a very nice system. You have very good equipment. You know, you have a very nice install. What is your next plan of attack to sort of, you know, suck out that next little bit to bring you to the next level? It's, it's really twofold. Uh, first and foremost, I want to further stiffening up the platform, the, the vehicle itself. Our, I feel like it's a really good foundation that we've built. I put, you know, myself and, and my local installer, uh, we put a ton of work and effort into deadening the vehicle as much as possible. Um, but as I've been, you know, participating in the events and listening to other vehicles and just getting advice from competitors that have been doing this for decades, you know, what we've done is really just a good start. There's so much more that needs to be done from a just soundproofing, sound deadening perspective that's really going to enhance the overall quality of the performance. you trying to be my salesman right now? I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of Resonix product in here, so it's uh, uh, well, thank but you no, for it's, the support. And, and I do, I'm a firm believer that, you know, 30, 35% of your overall budget is going to be in, in that product and, and it's worthwhile and it's a good investment if you want the performance. Um, so anyway, uh, I've got work to do. I want to continue enhancing the overall quality of the install itself. Um, and then from there, it's it's really somewhat hard to say because it could go a couple of different directions. You know, at, at certain at a certain point, once we've finished the, the foundation of the vehicle itself and we've tuned it to its you know, capacity, uh, then we have to start looking at speaker placement and, you know, do we need to move, you know, mid-range to a different location, you know, change the A-pillars. Uh, there's a lot of different options there that we have to weigh and, yeah. and really make a decision. And then it goes from semi-factory looking to possibly not. Full custom. You know, um, and that's a option that a lot of people, you know, seem to forget is a lot of people are still willing to sacrifice uh, a little bit of sound quality for the sake of making their install. Uh, more OEM in appearance and functionality. Um, and for a lot of these people, it's it's a point of contention of like, oof, do I make the step to go a little crazy and go semi-permanent here, or do we keep it relatively factory and serviceable and easy and replaceable? Um, but yeah, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing you here next year, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping, you know, to see some changes and see what we could do. Not that it, your car isn't already great sounding, um, but again, we were talking yesterday and, you know, I'm excited to uh, see what you can come up with. Brian, it was nice meeting you and thank you for doing this video. Any, any words to, you know, anyone you want to thank or any shout outs or anything? Uh, just everybody that's helped me along the way and then all my fellow competitors. Uh, I mean, these guys in just a short year's time, uh, I've built lifelong friendships. It's been a, cool. it's been a great, you know, uh, experience and, uh, you know, hopefully I can pass it forward as, you know, time goes on and I become more experienced at this and um, just so anybody that's helped me in the past, I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.